Hey there, everybody, and welcome to this special Christmas edition of the Gates of Graceland. I'm Kevin Kern with the Elvis Presley Enterprises Department of Marketing and Communications, and joining me today is Angie Marchese, Director of Archives here at Graceland. She, as she always says, has the fun job of playing with Elvis's things. I do, and um, you know, since it's a Christmas-themed uh, Gates of Graceland, let's talk about Christmas at Graceland. Why not? Let's start off with what is. What does it take to get Graceland so festive for the holidays? Because you, you kind of hit the rewind button and go back in time. You kind of, you don't do a modern interpretation of Christmas. You do Elvis's interpretation of Christmas. Exactly. And there really is a, it's a team effort. I mean, it starts with the guys that put up the nativity scene and put the lights up and down the driveway. Really inside the house, we kind of have the easy job. I mean, we're just changing drapes and putting up a couple of trees. The outside. Changing work. drapes. Yes. <laughs> now, the one thing about Graceland at Christmas that is so amazing is that the house takes on a whole different feel. Because it really does. Not only are we just setting up a Christmas tree and putting a couple poinsettias on the stairs, but we actually change the drapes, which are normally blue, to the red velvet drapes that Elvis would put up every year at Christmas time. So only the king of rock and roll would put up special red curtains for the holidays, but that's why he's so cool. Yes, and so we do the same thing, and it really gives the house a whole different feel, you know, and it's of course, perfect at Christmas time. And then we have the Christmas trees that we put up in the same places where Elvis put them up, you know. And it's kind of fun to imagine, you know, Christmas morning and Lisa running down the stairs waiting to see what Santa brought her here in the dining room, you know. Or even the entourage and the guys just kind of hanging out in the living room looking at the beautiful white tree that's in there. What I love is uh, kind of looking at the trees and you've got the, the C4, the big bulbs. Um, that was so popular in the 60s and 70s and even into the 80s and it it really is a vintage Christmas. It really is that and then if you look at some of the Christmas ornaments, especially the one here in the uh, dining room, you know, they're vintage ornaments, they're Elvis's ornaments, you know. Even the tinsel that is on the dining room tree gets taken down every year and gets reused every year. It's original Christmas tinsel. They are that tinsel. specific about yes. their tinsel here at Graceland. Yes, we take tinsel very seriously around here. <laughs> Now, of course, Elvis took Christmas seriously and he loved the holidays. And of course, as tradition, the decorations remain up here at Graceland through Elvis's birthday on January 8th. Uh, and we keep that tradition alive uh, still today. But take us back in time. Uh, tell us what Elvis's first Christmas was like here at Graceland. How did he decorate the house for the holidays? Because certainly moving here from Audubon Drive, they didn't have all of this stuff. No, they definitely had to expand their decorating uh, decor here for Christmas at Graceland. Now, Elvis's first Christmas in 57, you know, it was kind of one of those sentimental Christmases. Not only was it his first Christmas here at Graceland, but he also did just receive his draft notice at the same time. So he knew he was getting ready to kind of go into the army. And so, and he was kind of mentally preparing for that. But he didn't let that damper his Christmas spirit because he definitely went full throttle. I mean, one of the first things he went out and bought was a gigantic piece of lawn art, which mm. actually still is in the yard today. What is that? It's the Santa with the reindeer that says, Merry Christmas to all, Elvis. Now it's on the North Lawn, that's where we kind of display it, but Elvis actually displayed it right in the front of the house, right in the center of the yard so everyone could see it. And believe it or not, we still have the receipt for that lawn art and it cost Elvis around three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. Now Elvis eventually puts uh, a picture, a little bit of that art, on a Christmas card. Yes, Did he not? for the family Christmas cards and then that came in several colors. There was a blue version, a green version, and a red version which we all have in the archives. And so and if you opened it up it said Merry Christmas from the Presley. So that was kind of a nice little fun thing that people would receive in the mail from Get, Elvis. Getting a Christmas card from Elvis um, Pretty cool. On Pretty cool. Probably the, the the one card you have on top that you show to all of your neighbors. <laughs> Look what I got. <laughs> now, what about sending a card to the king of rock and roll? Elvis mm -hmm. received a lot of cards from a lot of friends, family, but also other celebrities. Yes, and all the mail would, was sent to Graceland was actually sent and received in Elvis's dad's office and it is still kept today. So we have boxes of Christmas cards and holiday cards that were sent here to Graceland. And Elvis's manager, Colonel Tom, actually received Christmas cards for Elvis as well. People would send them to Madison. And he had the secretary there put together a gigantic scrapbook 
full of all the Christmas cards that Elvis received at the Madison location. So we have lots of Christmas cards throughout the years from celebrities, fans. It's quite an amazing collection. And the fun thing about looking through them is how, you know, vintage and unique they are. Now over time, Elvis's Christmas display grew in size, did it not? He added yes. things, lights, other life-size objects in the front yard? Yes, um, like I mentioned, the sign adored the front yard for many years, and then in the mid-60s, the sign went to its home on the North Lawn, and Elvis started displaying a nativity scene in the center of the yard. A smaller version was the first nativity scene, but by the late 60s, it was a larger version, which we continue to display today with the same uh, shepherds and camels and everything you see out there is the exact same nativity scene that Elvis put out every year. And eventually the blue lights came and lined the driveway and probably confused a few pilots at Memphis International Airport. Exactly, and that story's funny because Elvis had seen it done in California and he called his dad and he said, hey dad, I just saw this really cool house, had these blue lights lined in the driveway. I want that to happen at Graceland and I want it to happen by the time I'm home for Christmas. <laughs> and Vernon's main concern was finding an airplane landed in the front yard right. because of the airport being so close. Fortunately, that hasn't happened yet, but they do adore the driveway and they're around the house. I mean, Graceland lit up for Christmas time. It's just magical. There is no other place quite like it. Now, of course, Elvis is synonymous with rock and roll, but also he's a part of the fabric of Christmas because of his Christmas tunes and his albums. Yes, exactly. In fact, it's not Christmas until I hear Blue Christmas on the I, radio. I'm with you on that one. But Elvis's Christmas album is one of his biggest selling albums. In fact, we received an award two years ago from Sony, BMG, RCA, the record label. Um, and it's the only diamond award that Elvis actually received. And it was for the record sales for his first Christmas album in 57. And that's the biggest award you can get. From it the is. Book diamond from. is the largest award you can get. And we have one of them. And it was for our Christmas record. Only for Elvis, of course. <laughs> now, it was oftentimes probably hard to find something that Elvis Presley might want for the holidays. But uh, we, we have objects around the house that, that were Christmas gifts to Elvis. Mm -hmm. The unique thing about Elvis and Christmas, again, is what do you buy the guy who has everything? everything. And especially Christmas for Elvis wasn't about receiving, it was always about giving. It was about seeing the reaction you know, on people's faces when he would give them things. Probably one of the best stories that I've heard is the year that he overheard some of the entourage guys talking about their Christmas bonuses, and he actually went to McDonald's down the street and got them all <laughs> McDonald's gift certificates. And then the, the president of the local McDonald's found out about it and sent him a thank you letter, which we have in the archives, <laughs> for thanking him for thinking of McDonald's during the Christmas time. You know, but getting things for Elvis, it's like, you know, Priscilla talks about the first Christmas in Germany mm -hmm. and how she looked all over Germany to try to find the perfect gift for Elvis and came across the pair of bongo drums. Now, we also have some things in the archives of gifts that Elvis also gave because that's what he did love to do, mm -hmm. including some uh, very sentimental Christmas gifts for his young daughter, Lisa Marie. Yeah, so if we thought Christmas at Graceland was special before Lisa was born, can you imagine what it was like the Christmas of 68? Lisa's, you know, a toddler running around the house, Santa's visiting for the first time. In fact, Vernon dressed up as Santa that year. And Elvis and Priscilla and the guys, they go all out, you know, making that Christmas so special. One of the things that we still have in the archives today is actually a little toy that it, Lisa got for her first Christmas. And we have home movie footage of their first Christmas here. And if you look closely at the table, you'll see this little toy sitting there, which we still have today. So, I mean, Christmas at Graceland for Lisa is always a very special time of year. In fact, today she still brings her family here to celebrate the holidays sometimes, you know, so Graceland is a very special place, not just for fans or for, you know, us employees, it's a very special place, but also for Lisa, it's still home to her, so. Now, of course, Graceland, uh, you know, always decorated for the holidays, and I'm sure Elvis had folks over mm -hmm. during the holidays. There's quite the famous photograph during one of those events uh, featuring Elvis and the Memphis Mafia, the entourage. Yes, it was actually after Sonny West's wedding, they all came back here to Graceland and they had just gotten their new badges. And so Elvis told the guys, hey, let's take a group picture. And so they gathered in the living room right in front of 
where the peacock windows now are. This was before the windows were there. And Elvis sits in this gold chair right in the center and the entourage is all around him, all flashing their new badges. And that was taken here. If you look very closely in the corner of the photo, you can see a little white branch of the Christmas tree that was in the living room at the time. Oh, wow. So, and the red drapes behind him. So that was taken during the Christmas season. So even back then, Graceland was always full of life, full of parties and Elvis was always welcoming everyone here. I understand you have one surprise for me and the fans uh, before we wrap up this edition of the Gates of Graceland. Is it a special Christmas gift for us? Uh, yeah, kind of, sort of. It actually is something that we literally found in the attic here at Graceland. Oh, wow. Um, so it's not in the best shape because it's been stored in the attic for years. Um, and now it's in the Grace. It's housed in the Graceland archives. So got to put the gloves uh, gotta on. Got to put the gloves on. Got to put the Mickey Mouse gloves on. But it's probably one of the most precious things that we have in the archives and we do keep it up in a very special location, it's temperature controlled so it doesn't deteriorate any more than what it already has because of its previous storage conditions. All right, well stop talking about it. Show okay, it to I'll us. Show it, show it, it to okay, us. Okay. Give us our Christmas gift because this is these are the types of fans <laughs> things that fans love. Or, yes. So the, this is Oh wow, this is Lisa's Lisa stocking. Marie's, Lisa Marie's Christmas stocking. Oh wow. And this is something that we don't display because it is in such delicate shape. Exactly. And it, and it was it sat in the archives. So anybody that's wondering, um, you know, this was in the attic before it went into the archives. Exactly. So it, it kind of had some deterioration to it. it. Yeah. So the good thing is that it's now being taken care of. So there's no more deterioration happening to it. And until now, we've actually just kept it really under lock and key in the artifact building. But I thought I'd bring it out so people could see Lisa's Christmas stocking. Well, on behalf of the fans and myself, thank you for sharing this with us. And uh, that wraps up this edition of the Gates of Graceland. Merry Christmas to you, Angie. Merry Christmas and to Merry you. Merry Christmas to all of the fans from the staff here at Graceland. We'll see you next time. Happy Bye, holidays. Everybody.